Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In this video, we're going to be discussing identifying organic compounds in forensic science. Okay, so one of the simplest things that we can do um, to identify it or deter it's quickly determine if something is organic versus inorganic is a process we call pyrolysis. Pyro being fire, lysis being break, we can heat the sample in air. Um, now, pyrolysis typically doesn't involve air, but py so perhaps we, can, we might just say pyrolysis or heating in air as an either technique, okay? So if we're talking about this, so remember that organic will form, substances will form carbon dioxide, C, carbon monoxide or soot, and whereas inorganic won't, okay? So if you do this process and you, um, and you burn it or heat it and see what happens, then that's kind of where you can identify um, quickly or exclude whether something is organic or inorganic. But that doesn't really help us with this problem. Or do, that doesn't really, um, <clears throat> the, the next kind of problem is, okay, well, if it's organic, what the, which type of substance, what class of substance, what type of molecule is that? And so there we need to rely on distinguishing tests for particular families. Okay, so we're gonna list out some of the, the different families that we're going to, that we can, um, we have tests for. Okay, so alkane, um, the functional group for that is all um, uh, single bonds. Okay, so carbon, carbon, and carbon hydrogen bonds. Okay, so a distinguishing test for this that we're going to we're going to carry out is a reaction with a uh, aqueous bromine, also known as bromine water. Okay, so this reaction um, only, so with aqueous bromine water is, a, is um, slow and needs UV light to occur. That's what we're gonna, we're gonna um, that's kind of the distinct, distinguishing test between that and alkenes. Um, remember that, so alkenes contain one carbon-carbon double bond, at least one. Um, and we can use this reaction with bromine water um, to distinguish alkenes as well. So the, this reaction with bromine water is fast and can occur in the dark. Okay, so if you can conduct this reaction away from a source of UV light, um, the alkene will um, very quickly react with the bromine and the alkane won't. The alkane requires a source of UV light for that reaction to happen. It will eventually, but it's slow. Um, in our production of materials module, we'll go through the difference between these reactions in a little bit more detail. Okay, and now we're going to introduce um, or discuss a family of organic compounds, which is it, we, we don't specifically need to master in the HSC syllabus, um, but it's what we would call aromatic. So lots of substances in forensics that we might come across. Uh, uh, fall into this category. Now they're not necessarily called that because they're pleasant to smell. They do have a distinctive smell uh, often, but um, they contain what's called a benzene benzene ring, which is a carb a six carbon hexagonal ring, um, which has alternating double bonds like this. And so it's often drawn um, either like this or more frequently, like this. The reason for this is that these three double bonds can, uh, the electrons in these double bonds are easily moved and rotated around the ring, and so they actually kind of, they, they actually smoosh their way pretty much around this ring, of uh, hexagonal ring of carbons. Okay, um, and so there is no reaction with, um, with bromine. Okay, so the, even though there's double bonds, they don't react like alkenes do. Um, and so UV or not. Okay, so it doesn't matter. They, so that if you use the same test, that you can distinguish these three substances from one another. If you add all of them to bromine water, the alkene will react instantly in the dark. The alkane will then will need light in order to react, but it will react. And then the, al the aromatic, the, the substance that contains the benzene ring won't react at all. Okay, the next three families that we're going to um, look at are alkanols, alkanoic acids, and esters. Okay, again, these three are all related to one another. So the functional group is where we've got our hydroxy or OH group. For alkanoic acid, 
we've got the presence of a carboxylic acid group, C-O-O-H. And then for the ester, we've got um, this group. Okay, so the COO in between two carbons. Okay, um, so maybe I'll put ours in there just to show that there's some, some other kind of carbon group that's there. Okay, so the alkanol, the way that we can um, distinguish, um, so to, to identify that, is to react with sodium metal. Okay, and then we form what's an, called an alkoxide ion. Okay, so it's like water will react with, um, with sodium metal to form hydroxide, alkanols will react with sodium metal to form an alkoxide ion. So e.g. ethoxide, which is CH3, CH2O minus. Okay, very strongly basic, much more so than hydroxide. Okay, and so then we can use um, phenolphthalein to identify the formation of um, this very basic ion that wasn't there before. Okay, um, an alkanoic acid will react with um, a carbonate to form bubbles. Okay, acid plus a carbonate gives a salt, carbon dioxide, and water. And then you can also tell by pH. Okay, especially if you had these two substances and you put in an, an indicator, acid base indicator, this one would not give a result to start with, and this one would. Um, so you could use that initially if you were trying to distinguish those two from one another. Um, and an ester has a sweet aroma. Okay, um, and then can hydrolyze to the acid and alkanol. Okay, so if you react it with water that you can then produce something that is acidic and something and then the alkanol as well but that's that's a bit of a harder um, test to distinguish first up okay so that you can distinguish these three from the others um as well so you need to be familiar with the, how to detect all of these substances so that if um l perhaps you're less familiar with the aromatic substance but the other ones you need to be able to identify and just to finish things off in this video, we're now going to look at distinguishing between acids, bases, and neutral substances. Um, in, in, you know, we have organic acids and bases, as well as others that, that are neutral. We need to be able to distinguish them as well. Okay, so um, for an acid and a base, that it depends on whether it's soluble or not. If it's soluble or insoluble, then that kind of uh, alters what we can do. Okay, if we um, if it's soluble, we can check the pH. Okay, so we might use indicator or paper, um, like a litmus paper or some some other kind of test that we can do to check if it's acidic. Um, um, but if it's insoluble, okay, that we can't test the solution there. As far as then, if it's insoluble, will it react with a base? Okay, slash a carbonate to form bubbles. Okay, so will you react, will it undergo that reaction? Okay, so you're going to see a similar sort of principle for bases. Okay, so you can get, so pH greater than 7. Um, so again, using an indicator or a paper, will this react with um, acid? Okay. Um, so will it react with an acid to either form to, to either dissolve or to form bubbles if the base is is a carbonate? And then for if it's something for neutral, uh, we get no reaction um, with you know or, or, so you won't get a reaction with either of these. And we will also be able to if it was soluble, we could measure a neutral pH. Okay, so thinking about a forensic chemistry example. All right, so um, for acids. Um, there's a range of kind of, you know, we might have um, fatty acids present in human tissue or kind of if you break down triglycerides or kind of fat molecules and lipids, um, we can be testing for this. We can also be testing for um, things that are acids like in surfactants and things that we might have in some organic residue, um, as well as then also being able to distinguish um, 
perhaps if acid was was a, a weapon of the crime scene or was used to try and dissolve a, a body or something like that breaking bad style okay um so base okay um the substance is called alkaloids naturally occurring um very toxic bitter substances like you'd have present in in coffee and in chocolate and things like that are also in things like nicotine and lots of um, poisonous substances so being able to identify that they're basic which is where this alcohol where they get their name from um is is quite useful in that respect okay and then um perhaps then when we're thinking about neutral substances then we're thinking about our alkanes alkenes etc that we were just looking at. so now we're just going to briefly touch on um, three of the techniques that might be available in the forensic chemist's laboratory that wouldn't be available to us in a school laboratory. Okay, so um, I'm not going to write heaps of notes on these, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a, a, a verbal kind of recap. Okay, but so infrared or IR spectroscopy um, produces um, an infrared spectrum um, based on d different wavelengths of what infrared that a substance or a molecule will absorb. So this is um, particularly where we're thinking about organic substances. Okay, now, so we looked at some distinguishing tests, some simple tests in the lab, um, but this is much more specific, much more characteristic to be able to separate different types of organic compounds from one another and also to specific kind of arrangements of the bonds, you know, identifying one ester instead of another, being able to identify um, the difference between this alkane and this alkane, okay? And so it, it, it's based on um, the types of bonds. Okay, because basically the, the essence is that infrared makes these different types of covalent bonds hum or resonate at the right frequency. And, um, and so being able to actually detect um, that absorption of infrared at those frequencies um, gives us information about the bonds that are there. Okay, mass spectrometry. We're going to look at in a lot more detail a little bit later in the topic. So I'll only give you a brief overview. Um, but basically we break apart the molecule. Okay, so we're talking about organic substances here. Again, um, actually, all of these ones are, are more applicable to organic substances because, um, yeah, we've got other techniques for inorganic ones that would be useful. Um, so they break apart the molecule and we're looking at the fragments. Okay, so once we break it, once we smash it apart, what fragments does it break into, which is characteristic of its structure? Another one that we're not going to go into in much detail in this, in this course, but is very useful at, a, at that sort of level, is called Nuclear Magnetic Resonance, or NMR, technology, where it looks at the way that the, the nuclei in, within that molecule respond to a magnetic field, um, and that gives us information about, um, so magnetic field, that gives us information about its structure. Okay, so looking at how, because the nuclei, when they, they resonate with the magnetic field, they interact with each other. Okay, so in, interaction of nuclei okay um so again very useful um but certainly not something available to your average kind of chemist and or, or a school laboratory okay thanks very much for watching bye for now